Hi, it's Justin with Spalted Stack Studio, and in this video, I'm going to be building a hand tool cabinet. In the first video, I dimensioned all my lumber and cut everything to size, so now I can jump straight into the build. When I designed this, it needed to be really sturdy, and I also didn't really want to use any screws. Now, I still did use some screws in a couple spots, but I kept it to a minimum. I'll also be building this completely out of hardwood. So in the design process and as I'm building it, I have to be careful to account for seasonal wood movement. And here I started by running dados on the sides. This will be for the shelves that we'll do later on in the video. I could have did a lot better job cutting these dados. I should have made a template to allow me to cut it to the exact same size of the shelves. I didn't do this and because of this I ended up with slightly oversized dados. Now I can cut the miters on the top, bottom, and sides. Now because I already cut everything to the exact size, I don't want to remove any material off the length. So I'll be cutting the miter just until I get a nice sharp corner. And once I'm happy with the cut, I'll repeat the process for both the top and bottom sides of each side piece. I don't have to move my fence again until I move to the next set of pieces. Now I'm done cutting the miters, I can move on to cutting the dados for the back panel. I'm going to do this at about a quarter of an inch, and I'm going to do it a little over a quarter inch deep to allow for seasonal wood movement. And now we can move to one of the many glue ups in this project. I'm going to start by pre-soaking my end grain with a little glue. Now I'm not really entirely sure if this offers much support, but it seems like it does. So until I can do a video in the future about it, I'm going to continue doing it. And I'm also only going to glue in the center of the end grain on the panel. This will hold it in place and stop it from rattling, but it will also allow the wood to move through the season. And once we manhandle this piece into position, I'll go ahead and get my strap clamps ready and clamp everything together. And unfortunately my camera died and I didn't get any footage of me actually applying the strap clamps to the project. Which is probably for the best because it was a little bit of a struggle. Things just kept wanting to slip and it was a little frustrating. But thankfully I got everything all done and now I can check to make sure everything's perfectly square. Now since we have a lot of pieces going into this that are all dadoed, it has to be perfect. Otherwise our cuts aren't going to line up and things aren't going to fit together well. Now I can cut the dados for the main shelf. Now we have to be really careful here because these dados need to line up perfectly with the dados on the lower portion of the box. And since this shelf itself sits in a dado, we have to take those dados into account for our measurements. And this is one of the projects where even a 32nd of an inch, maybe even a 64th of an inch, is really going to throw everything off. So we need to be really careful and take our time measuring and cutting for these dados. I made this shelf very tight fitting. I don't want any slop going left or right, because again, it's going to mess the alignment of our dados up. And since it was such a tight fit, I didn't even have to clamp anything, so I was really happy with that. Now that I got the main shelf glued in, I can work on the hand tool shelf. This is going to be the top piece, so I'm going to run some half inch dados through that. I also repeated a dado for the side, although I didn't get footage of that. I'm trying not to bore you with every single tedious task, because if I did, this video would have been over 9 hours long. Now I can glue in the hand plane shelf and the small tool shelf. I'm also going to be really careful and measure everything, make sure everything's a proper distance and everything's perfectly square. Again, if anything's even a little off, it's going to throw the dados off and things aren't going to fit properly. While that's all drying, I'm going to move on to the doors. I did a very similar process to the cabinet, cutting everything down to size, cutting my miters, pre-soaking the miters. This time I used some blue tape to hold everything in place so that way I had perfect alignment. And then I'll use the strap clamps to apply pressure. And a pro tip, always tape the inside of your miters. This will greatly assist with glue cleanup and sanding in the future. I somehow always forget to do this even though it's a critical step. Next, I'm going to use a mortise and tenon bit to make what's essentially going to be a shaker style door with a floating panel. And I'm going to use my feather boards to make sure that everything is nice and tight against the fence and the tabletop. 
That's going to ensure that the dado is consistent all the way through the workpiece. And I know shaker doors are supposed to just have a flat panel. And initially that was my plan. However, I didn't really like the look of it on the cabinet itself. So I went ahead and just did a raised panel on it. Given my router size, I did have to do about three or four passes in order to get the finished product. I definitely could not do this in one or two passes. My router could not keep up. Off camera, I went ahead and glued everything together. Now I'm going to run rabbits on all four edges. That way it sits nice and snug inside the door frame that we glued together earlier. And since the walnut is a floating panel, we really don't have to worry about seasonal wood movement gluing this piece into the door frame. So we're going to make sure it's nice and snug. The walnut has plenty of room to move in the cherry, and the cherry is not really wide enough to worry about seasonal wood movement. Now that we got the rabbits cut, we can glue everything into the frames. And again, this is a situation where you either want to tape the inside, or when you're done clamping, flip it over and wipe it out with a damp towel to help manage some of the glue. Again, for whatever reason, other than I like to make things difficult on myself, I forgot to do that, and it was a pain to get that glue cleaned up. Since I thought ahead for once, I made the face a little oversized. That way, once all the glue dries, I can come in with a flush trim bit and get everything nice and flush. Next, I'm going to work on the plate that's going to hold the large and small hand planes. I did make a mistake here in not measuring all the hand planes. I measured one of my smaller ones and assumed that all the hand planes were going to be the same width, which they're not. Anyways, I measured out the spots for the dados, and then I'll take it over the table saw using a flat tooth blade, run my dados. Now, this would have been a lot easier with a dado blade. However, I'm not a big fan of the dado blade that I possess. It's not very accurate. It leaves some nasty marks. It's just all around not a good blade. So until I get a better one, I generally stick to just using the normal flat tooth blade. Which normally isn't too big of a deal. However, if you got to cut a bunch of dados, it does become very tedious. You also have to make sure that you're applying constant downward pressure. If not, the board may rise up a little bit or cup a little bit. And the blade won't take off as much material as everywhere else. This is easily overlooked until assembly when you have troubles getting your piece into the dado. When cutting the divider pieces, you're going to want to cut them a little oversized. That way when you put them into the plate, they stick out past the ends just a little bit, maybe a sixteenth inch on each side. After glue up, you can take it back to your table saw and just make a light pass through it all make everything nice and flush. Glue up was a little bit of a pain on this. Since I removed so much material from the dividers, there was a lot of built up tension that got released. This caused things to want to move as I was clamping them down. So I did have to use pretty much every single clamp I got to make sure that everything was nice and tight. After the glue dried and I removed any excess using my scraper, I'll come in with the hand plane and make sure that everything's nice and flush. This is one of the situations where you want to remove as little material as possible. After smoothing up the sides, we can bring it over to the crosscut sled and square up the ends. Again, we're removing very, very little material, less than a sixteenth of an inch. And here's the fixing my mistake earlier. When I originally designed this, I took a measurement off of my jack plane. I assumed that all the planes were the same size and I was terribly wrong. When I went to test it with my joining plane, it did not fit. So I had to use my flat tooth blade, take a little bit of material off, and make the sections a little bit wider. Now I can make a bracket to hold the hand tool plate in place. I'm going to take a piece of walnut and glue a couple dowels into it. I'll then drill a set of matching holes into the cabinet. That way this bracket is removable and I can take the plate out if it gets damaged at any point in time. Installing the hinges was a giant pain. The material comes in a giant roll and can be cut to size. However, it retains that memory and wants to bend while you're trying to install it. So I took a piece of scrap wood and ran a very thin rabbit along the edge. That way I can tape it to the cabinet, then insert the hinge into it, and it holds it in place while I screw it down. While we're at the cabinet, I'm going to go ahead and install the French cleat. 
Now I'm going to be sure that these screws are going through the center of the board. That way there's less chance of the wood splitting when I put it in the screw or the weight eventually split in the wood. This cabinet is solid cherry and walnut and is very, very heavy. So it needs to be able to hold a lot of weight. Off camera, I glued together a cherry panel for the inner doors. Now I'm going to use a Forstner bit and drill about halfway for a magnet to hold the door closed. I'll use some 5 minute epoxy to glue the magnets in. And I went way overboard on these magnets. I should have used much smaller magnets. These things are ridiculously strong and it makes the door not only hard to open, but it also slams shut. And since I epoxied them in, I can't really get them out. So I kind of have to just live with it. For this project, I decided to go with an oil-based finish. Now normally, I would have went with a film-based finish like lacquer because it is that much more resilient and can take a lot of damage. However, this project is going to hold very sharp tools and metal tools at that. So the likelihood that that lacquer is going to end up getting chipped is pretty high. Oil base doesn't take quite as much damage, but it is way easier to fix. So if anything does happen, I can just lightly sand it and apply a little more Danish oil. Once I assembled everything, I realized the smaller hand plane wasn't seating properly because the handle was actually hitting the stop lock. So I'm just going to use my sander and make a nice little groove for the handle to sit in. And now we can apply finish to the pieces that we just made. Throughout this process, I'll do about three coats of Danish oil. With the first coat, I like to lay it on real heavy to allow it to absorb into the wood. After allowing it to dry for a day or two, I'll do the second coat with a white scotch bright and kind of buff it in. This acts like wet sanding, except it's much easier because it doesn't clog the paper so fast. Here I'm going to use a rabbit bit on my router to make a very slight rabbit on some walnut. I'll be cutting these pieces down later on to make brackets to hold my squares. Now all the length measurements don't really matter. It's just there enough to hold the square in place. It doesn't really need to be a specific measurement. Just whatever looks good. Since I'll be using dowels to secure the, all the brackets into the doors, I made a quick jig. That way I can make sure each dowel hole is in the exact same spot. This jig can also be applied to the doors. Once I'm happy with the location of the squares, I'll put a stop block to the door put my bracket and mark my holes. Now I don't really want to drill through my bracket because it's kind of hard to see how deep I'm actually going into the doors. And considering these doors are only three quarter of an inch thick, I don't want to go through them and ruin the backside. Now that we've got all the brackets installed, I can make some cheap dovetail drawers using my Porter Cable jig. Now these drawers are fairly small and I want them to easily pull out of their location. The cabinet had to go a little higher than I would like it and it's a little too high for me to look into the drawers. So I figured it'll be a lot easier to just pull them out and look through what's in them. Now I can run the dados for the drawer bottoms. Honestly, this is kind of a half-ass way to do this. You should be doing a stop dado on this so you don't see the dado through your tails. However, I didn't have the bit for that at this time. And I wasn't really too worried about it because these are just going into the shop. Off camera, I went ahead and made some drawer faces out of walnut. I'll use some small screws to secure those to the drawers. And if you notice on the drawer bottoms, it's actually removable. And I did this just in case it get damaged, considering that hand cleaning blades and various other heavy objects are going to be going in there. I wanted to make sure that if the drawer bottoms did get damaged, I could easily replace them. Now that we're done with the build, we can put everything in and hopefully it stays on the wall. This cabinet empty is incredibly heavy. Now given that I'm putting a bunch of heavy metal tools into it, I don't even want to know how much this thing weighs. But it was a very fun build. My goal was to use absolutely no plywood and keep screws to a minimum. The only screws used were the drawer faces, drawer bottoms, hinges, and the French cleats. Overall, I was really happy with this project. Of course, there's things I wish I could have changed and mistakes that I wish didn't happen, but that's part of woodworking. And I know it's been quite a long time since I posted any videos. I had a very large project land and that took priority over everything. But that's all done now and I can keep out pushing videos, so like and subscribe.